Sandy Britland, and I'm the curator of Backstitching Contemporary Needle Art. I was inspired to curate this show working with women who were using traditional fiber techniques to create contemporary art, and they also pushed me to take my artwork into a more contemporary and interesting uh, place. Um, I've always been interested in working with fiber. From a very young age, I was sewing, knitting, crocheting, uh, and uh, I was always fascinated by the patterns that you could create using simple stitches. So uh, I, have, um, I have a broad variety of uh, techniques that I have here today that I can show you uh, where I started and how I moved through all of the different fiber techniques to move into my current art, which is working with quilting, uh, but in a very contemporary way, combining not only quilting, but crocheting, beadwork, and embroidery. So this is a traditional uh, drop spindle. It's used to spin wool, flax, or silk, or cotton into a thread. Threads can be then uh, applied together to make yarn. This is a very simple technique. All you are doing is you're, you're adding a spin. If you take wool fiber and pull on it, you see it comes apart very, very quickly and easily. But once you've spun a thread, it doesn't come apart. It's stronger. So it can be used to weave or crochet or knit or embroider. And it's just done by putting a little bit of spin into your spindle and then drawing out drawing out the wool into a smaller amount and allowing that spin to run up from the spindle into your uh, fiber and that creates your thread. So it's a very, very simple technique. It's also very old. Um, they found the first spun threads in a Georgian cave um, and they were 40,000 years old. So this, this technique has been with us for a very, very long time. The first needlework that I learned beyond sewing was embroidery. And the embroidery was fairly simple, as in this piece. Um, and it was a, a lot of things like uh, toaster covers and, and, you know, basically stitch by numbers. But that gave me the basis to learning the stitches that I could use in the future. Um, eventually, I moved away from uh, needlework, moving into needle felting, which uh, uses wool roving to create three-dimensional and two-dimensional pieces. Um, so this is a, an object, this is a bird that I created um, using needle felting and wool. I also did two-dimensional objects such as um, flowers and little panels that uh, represent things in nature. My inspiration comes from nature and uh, I love gardening and I love flowers so they tend to feature very strongly in my artwork. Um, but, you know, uh, as with every artist who's working with medium, you just want to keep experimenting and learning new things. So I moved on to wanting to embroider on my own fabrics. So that required me to learn how to do monoprinting, which is a technique where you use acrylic plates on a gel plate and you lift the print off of the gel plate. That became a perfect background for other embroideries that I had uh, envisioned for, for each of the pieces. Um, inspiration also comes from the pieces themselves. So um, this is a monoprint. These are two monoprints that I did that are waiting for the inspiration for the embroidery that will go over it. The other thing that I use is a lot of beading. Um, I try to keep the beading as uh, a, an accent to the piece and not uh, the feature of, of the piece. As I was talking about um, those monoprinting pieces uh, being an inspiration, that's 
what I, the inspiration of these pieces that I printed started to make me think about, uh, they had a very sciencey, physical type look to them and they inspired me, along with reading an awful lot about physics, uh, to see if I could translate some of what I was learning about physics into uh, f fiber art. So um, in this particular piece, it, it was uh, this running line down the center that reminded me of a grid. And so I enhanced the grid with embroidery and then using crocheting, I created these shapes. And this piece is called String Theory. It's uh, about um, what is inside the smallest particles of an atom, uh, a vibrational string, and that they take multiple dimensions beyond the three that we're aware of. So, uh, or four, I guess, if we want to include time. But, uh, so, so this is a representation of the string theory. And then um, this piece, the backgrounds reminded me of, uh, for example, this one looked like uh, when ice melts and directly into the air. So I called it sublimation. So there's three pieces in this panel. The first one is sublimation. The second one is plasma. Uh, and the last one is fission because this reminded me very much of the fission. So I've been using my monoprinting to inspire what actually gets embroidered on top or uh, beaded on top. As I was working with uh, the jelly plates, um, I tried using different techniques and uh, this one um, just started to remind me of solar wind. So I used it to incorporate a sun or any star that would make elements, of course. And uh, so these are two separate monoprints that I combined together and done a little bit of embroidery and beadwork. This is a planet, or a sun rather, or a star, making gold. This piece I decided to use some traditional quilting techniques in the background, um, along with using my embroidery in several different pieces and crocheting to complete an overall project um, that I'm calling Redshift. So this one does not have any mono printing on it, but the fabrics uh, inspired the piece.